Welcome everyone to STPCon Radio. I'm Rich Hand, host of uh, this upcoming conference, STP Conference in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana, April 14th through 17th. And today I have the opportunity and the pleasure of speaking with Mark Tomlinson, who is one of our good friends at STP, big time performance tester, Perf Bites, uh, uh, famous host, uh, looking for a better word there. Uh, he's going to be doing some stuff at our performance ex- expert roundtables, and uh, he's part of our advisory board here. Uh, Mark, welcome to the program. Hi, Rich. Nice to, nice to chat with you again, my friend. Yes, I, I always love our chats because... Um, you know, this is going to be a fun interview. This isn't just the business of testing. We're going to uh, talk a little bit about personal stuff as well. And if people have a question for Mark, you can call in here at 714-583-6958 and ask Mark a question yourself. But I think one of the reasons we're kindred spirits, Mark, is we both have a music background. And, and I know you write a little music and you play a little music. Why don't you tell the folks a little bit uh, about maybe music and, and, and how that impacts the way you test or maybe it doesn't impact the way you test. It's, it's actually, so it, as usual with me, I always have an interesting story to, to, to any question that you come up with, Richard. But the truth is it goes back to uh, there is a kinship between, I think, engineers and musicians, and particularly when it comes to having to express yourself creatively, creatively um, with let's say, improvisation or expression, uh, even an emotional uh, experience uh, that you would have using an application or something. The similarity between coding and engineering and music is that you have to operate within what, what is a fairly strict foundation of uh, a structure, like a, like a programming language or like a, a 12-tone scale and a meter, and all of the exact exact things you'd have with musical composition. So there's this weird sort of structural requirement within the language of music or the language of code that the challenge, it's not just, hey, let's just go express ourselves emotionally. It's here's the challenge of having to come up with something that's, let's say, emotive or, uh, you know, entertaining or influential through this, the confines of a very structured language. So, you know, I'm not saying you can go write, you know, Bach, a Bach concerto in Java. Well, someone probably already has written a Bach concerto. <laughs> I don't know if he even made concertos or anything, but he was a really great composer, of course. And um, yeah, but, but maybe maybe if they had JavaScript back in the in the 15th century or something, it would be good. Yeah, classical you know, music in that structure. Uh, Absolutely. And, and one of the things that I've always wanted to do, Mark, and, and I enjoy doing presentations, and I've done a lot of um, uh, speaking in front of not so much testers as people in the customer service technical IT support oh, yeah. space, I always wanted to do a keynote utilizing a band. Because when you put together a team, right, when you put together a team, it's so much like a band where – you know, you can't all have the same skill set, but like you said, you're working from a core mission to play a song, for example. So that yeah. that's your your core mission, and then you need a bass player, a keyboard player. Yeah, you might need a singer. You have a guitar player, a drummer, and how yeah. each one of those fit together to to come up with a product that's of high quality, and you know. Uh, you know, the customers enjoy. So I've always thought about mm. doing an analogy of like bringing up the the drummer, right? They lay down the, uh, the beat. Then you bring the bass player in to lay down the, lay down the line. And then you start getting the more, um, it, you know, the more creative side of the guitar player or the keyboard that can throw in a melody or two. I, I think yeah. that would be fun, wouldn't it? Yes, I think so. And then your project manager would show up as a vocalist and be a prima donna. They just they want the spotlight. <laughs> they take all the credit. And your performance tester or your software tester is the bass player that you know keeps everything together and provides the bass harmony structure for the composition, but never gets any credit. You know, they just sit in there. You know. Yeah, and, yeah, then, exactly. and then the, the music critic. <laughs> the music critic is the uh, business side, right? 
That's right. Exactly. They're in the audience and they're they're taking notes. They're the director of some sort. But you know, for me, uh, music is it, it is more unstructured. Some of the stuff, if you actually go to my website, um, which we can share out somewhere, you can find oh, me. Absolutely. Just go search for yeah, my personal website, and I have recorded some stuff. Uh, years ago uh, with a guy named Grant Perry, who was a bass player and um, a very improvisational artist. And, um, like, I got into playing lap steel. So I play dobro, I play guitar, I play all sorts of different instruments. But I got into playing lap steel, and um, it's a, And I bought, like, three days before this gig, um, I bought a, an eight-string Fender lap steel with relatively i had some dexterity on a six string with the tuning on a six string but i had never played an eight string lap steel in my life and i ended up actually tuning it completely wrong uh well not completely wrong mostly wrong and played the entire gig uh just totally improvisational uh and there's some of the most peculiar things the sounds that we got out of it and to me that was you're you're not coding you're not checking and you're not testing that music, you're just, it's real-time, continuous, yeah. uh, ongoing, improvisational composition, which uh, totally improvised music. So you, if you want to hear my brain uh, without the structures of good test techniques or quality, then you can go listen to that. It's still entertaining, but it's very freeform, uh, crazy yeah. guitar playing. <laughs> yeah, me, I, I'm more, I need the chords and the structure. I, I'm creative in creating new chords and structures, but I'm not a very good improv guy because I don't have that kind of background, but I do enjoy uh, a good improv session watching. Um, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I, I wouldn't want to sit in on it. I, as long, if you told me I needed to pay, play these five chords and here's what I want, I would be a great rhythm section for you just to hold the, hold the straight rhythm. But, but as far as all the improv, that's, that's not my, um, I think I'm creative, nuts. but not, not from that perspective. Not nuts, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like I am. You, uh, well, we should it, have not... a jam at STB. One of the yes, I know. One of these years, uh, we should have a jam at STBCon. The STBCon late night. Yeah, yeah late, late night. And well, well, you have to take uh, contemporary songs or classic songs and convert the lyrics into some testing related subject. Oh, that would, would be, be fun. I think that could be the, yeah. The software testing blues. Mike Lyles actually, he I've told him he needs to write the lyrics to the software testing blues. I think that that would <laughs> that would only be good. Very fun. But SCPCon's coming up, Rich. We're going to see each other just about a month from now, right? Yes, it's about four or five weeks from now uh, down in beautiful New Orleans. We've, we're going back to the Sheridan down there. And for folks that are listening, if you've never been to New Orleans, you need to go there. It's um, it's a lot of fun. The hotel is strategically located at the top of Bourbon Street. And uh, yeah. there'll be some great, you know, besides great conference activity, there's an opportunity to just step out the door and go see some crazy people walking around uh, uh, oh, Bourbon yeah. Street. So, Talk about so, great music. Um, oh, there's yeah. fantastic guitar playing, blues playing, jazz, funk, all sorts of really, really cool stuff. M- musically, New Orleans is, a, is, a, is an old school kind of place. It's great music town, uh, especially that, live music, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. So, cool. so before we, should we talk, talk a little bit about, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I want, we'll definitely get to the conference and some of the things that you're doing down there as well and we're doing down there. But uh, tell me a little bit about how Perf Bites is going. I know you just recently had a continuous performance testing um, podcast. And how are things going there? How's your, uh, uh, your, your co-host James doing? And uh, how's everything going there? Are things going at Perf Bites the way you hoped? Yes. Well, of course, we hoped somebody would listen, and, you know, James's <laughs> mom usually tunes in. We can count on that. So we at least have one person listening. Um, in the last episode, we had uh, the pleasure of our good friend Carlos Chidiak actually joined us, and Carlos was on the uh, engagement out of Beaverton, Oregon, when we had the original breakfast meetups at International House of Pancakes. Uh, and so he's sort of a Perf Bites founder when we did, like, the Perf Bites breakfast. Um, and it's so we're getting this year will be two years old as of you know October or November, so we're about a year and a half old, and so we're just learning how to walk. Um, we've we've got uh, and we, you know pretty soon we're going to be very very self sufficient walking around as a toddler. 
um, telling people, I'm two years old. I'm two years old. <laughs> yes, exactly. Walking on the train. Um, but James is fantastic to work with. We're very different personalities. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to the disciplines in the industry and the practices of being a performance assessor, we actually have a, a lot in common and, and it makes for an interesting, it makes for an interesting chemistry in the show. Um, we've, uh, we've covered 38 episodes in the year and a half that we've been going. So it's about every two weeks. And um, of everyone that we talk to, to the most part, says, how on earth did, have you guys continued to, co- how are you at 38 different episodes? I thought performance testing, you do like one episode and you're done. Mm-hmm. And what they would know if they came to our sessions at STP at the conference, they'd be like, oh, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. There's, you know, at least 38 episodes worth of subject material uh, to talk about. Um, but still the most, uh, the, so we get fantastic feedback uh, from the listeners. We have a, a pretty good flow of in, uh, people sending emails to ask at perfights.com, so they ask a questions and we answer them on the air as we can. And um, we, the feedback's been very good. We actually, uh, Rich, we shortened the show and split it up into smaller chunks uh, so that people could digest it because they're supposed to be perf bites, not like yep. you know a four course meal <laughs> with wine and dessert. And so we we actually shortened the show and we you know we separated uh, this uh, segment that we call the news of the damned, which is uh, introduced by um, Beelzebub, the the uh, uh, proprietor of darkness um, himself, yep. uh, which is basically uh, highlighting the f- more worldly famous outages uh, from uh, people in the IT department who clearly we're not thinking straight or probably may be influenced by demonic possession as their <laughs> websites go crashing. Um, and James came up with the name and I just ran with it. So, um, and speaking of the music stuff, like I've done all the musical production for the show as well. And so um, people really like the uh, Perf Bites theme. It's a bass playing. It's very fun. Uh, but yeah, we're doing great. Uh, uh, you know, we're at about 12,000 uh, listeners worldwide. Excellent. Uh, cool. Total and on any given episode, we're between four. You know, the day of, it's it's two or three hundred listens in the first day. So we're things are we, we're gaining a lot of interest, and it's still growing. So um, we'll keep doing it as long as people are still listening. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't surprise okay. me because anybody that's listening now that uh, was at the Phoenix conference, you did a live broadcast of Perf Bites, and I yeah. I'll tell you. It was, even if you're not a performance tester, it was very clever, uh, very funny, um, very engaging, and you could understand, you, you kind of take it on from a non tech or you did it in Phoenix anyway, from a non-technical perspective, but a very strategic um, and enlightening perspective, even if you are not a performance tester if you're one of those folks that uh um you know just in quality or or a business guy and wants to understand yeah. a little bit about how performance impacts your organization i highly recommend it because it was so much yes. fun but we didn't we didn't we didn't bore you did we you it, it, no, it was entertaining enough you would have no idea um that uh, between the two of us, James is, has a little more apprehension about public speaking. He has to get in the groove to do it. And so, you know, being on a podcast is, is, is nice. We're very comfortable. But you know, speaking in public in front of the group like that, uh, we've only really done that twice uh, at, at STP shows. So um, we're going to be doing another one. Um, I think it's on the Wednesday night of STP Con, so that would be the mm-hmm. 15th, I think. And um, it's always a really fun time. I have, I'm not sure. We usually we kind of wing the topic or we try to kind of feel out what's happening at the conference and what the theme is and what people are talking about. Obviously, last fall, it was the entire healthcare.gov website crash, which was perfect mm-hmm. for us because we want to highlight, you know, what people could do to have fixed it or, um, or what political repair they had to make. <laughs> to oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was a never-ending thing. In fact, I think every uh, session at SDPCon was about healthcare.gov last year, uh, at least mentioned, and then we got on with the show. Um, yep. <laughs> it was very fun. And and you know to uh, to the acclaim of all those people out there, developers trying to fix it, it's still going to be a topic this spring in April. <laughs> so, I think so. I think yeah. so. There's there's still. I mean, it's um. There's a few other ones we find honestly. Rich, recently, at least in 2014, it's been uh, mobile sites 
and or ticketing websites, tick, like online ticket sales, in the UK. The UK has just taken the lead. They have two or three stories uh, a week that come out of another, yet another, something's happening in the UK. To I don't know if it's bandwidth or I don't know what's happening over there. It could be all the closed circuit TV cameras they have all over on, on the network. Um, could it be, that are, uh, that are could, it, could it be Verizon um, uh, uh, throttling their uh, service over there? <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. I, I don't know if you've heard that with uh, Netflix and Verizon with the whole um, uh, what do they call it? The internet access there. Um, yeah, the open speed. so they 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 govern yep. your your speeds, and so uh, I think Comcast they put some deal together, and Netflix. I forget the latest number, but it's like they compromise. They they make up like forty or fifty percent or more of the actual bandwidth consumption on the internet. And I'm like, boy, we you know, what if we all just went back to using Blu-ray discs in our homes? We would get yeah. like fifty percent network throughput on the internet. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, I, I, I love Netflix, Netflix though. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm a Netflix yeah. guy. I love the House of Cards and uh, Downton Abbey oh, when yeah. it gets. I, all those all those shows are very nice to uh, nice to have access to. So, hey, let me yeah. let's talk a little bit about the upcoming conference and what you're doing there. As far as right. you're you're doing a uh, workshop on advanced performance puzzles, you're going to be hosting a performance uh, expert roundtable. So, talk a little bit about those two and what uh, folks can expect from that. Oh, I, I, as you know, Rich, I come to SCPCon and I just do as much as possible. You guys are gracious enough to let me do tutorials. Uh, and this upcoming tutorial, one of the things last uh, fall we did was a uh, intro to performance. We do intro performance online now as an STP online learning. Um, and so we do uh, another more uh, advanced class, which is a pre-conference workshop called Performance Analysis and Remediation. And it's also uh, commonly known in my head as the art of performance analysis, um, which is the thing that most people think when they talk to a performance guy. It all just sounds like mystic black art. How did you know that that thing, the thing, was connected to the thing? And and um, so I'm I'm going to attempt to actually in one day teach the basic constructs for uh, performance analysis, and of course. For anyone that's getting started in performance testing, this is not the first class you're going to take. This is going to be the third or fourth class. Uh, and remediation, of course, is what we do once we determine what is what has been uh, a bottleneck or what's been broken uh, or interact and how we remediate that and escalate that. So that should be a really fun workshop that's happening on, I guess it's the 13th, um, 13th yes, or 14th, it's, or Monday. It's, right? it's, yeah, it's Monday, and it's from 9 to 4. And, uh, 9 to 4. Um, yep. Yeah, performance so that, I'm analysis, really psyched yep. about that. Yeah. Performance analysis, the black arts, the art of performance analysis should be awesome. Now, and I have two other things. So I have a track session uh, called Advanced Performance Puzzles, and this is a direct request from people that were in the workshop and some of the more sort of intermediate or advanced customers, uh, attendees last fall, who said, you know, we, I want to, you know, present some puzzles and so it's going to be a, a sort of a group, it's a track session, but it's going to be sort of a group collaboration where we sort of, I present the puzzle and you put your, you know, you get to vote and we go around. I don't, I don't know exactly how we'll do the interactive part, but I have a handful from all my years of performance testing of these bizarre issues with performance, timing, volume, load, bottleneck constraints, and I'll describe them sort of like, um, uh, you uh, like a mystery, and then you would have to be, you know, Hercule, Her, what Hercule Poirot, I guess. I, not French, I can't say that. Or uh, you'd be Sherlock Holmes. I, I totally butchered that French guy's Clouseau. name. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clouseau. There you go. Jean, Inspector Clouseau, Jean although he's, Clouseau. he's sort of yep. yes, but you know, he was a diver, wasn't he? The oh, that's right. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. he's, he was the, the guy that in the National <laughs> Geographic. That, Although the, the, it, he was also solving the mysteries of the sea, uh, <laughs> which you and I let's have a yes, Rich. You and I are not allowed to speak French, even though we're going to New Orleans. Um, so the advanced performance puzzles should be really fun. Um, so we're going to present. I'm going to present a puzzle, and then we sort of get to uh, nominate answers from the audience. People get to sort of debate how they would approach stuff so that there's a little bit uh, interactive piece there. And we're also doing um, something with all the different tracks, which is uh, you guys came up with, which is the performance roundtable 
concept, which is pretty cool. Um, and so I'll be facilitating that with probably James will probably join me and maybe a couple other uh, leads. And it's it's the roundtable discussion should be really fun because we're actually uh, going through real problems that are presented from the customers, and then they're able to get sort of peer feedback and review uh, in different groups. Again, it's sort of a small group uh, problem solving. I guess that's the right way you would say it, Rich. It's sort of mm-hmm. group problem problem solving. Um, and so it's also, uh, to be honest, free consulting because you never know who's going to sit at your table. It could be me, and I'm <laughs> going to give you all these fantastic, as many as ideas as I can in you know eight minutes. So we made it. You know, there's a little speed geeking type of concept in that. Um, and I think I, I, I maybe I left something out. I, I did. I, I didn't forget anything, did I? I think well, those are the no, only I, ones I got this. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I <laughs> besides being part of the advisory board that uh, helped us put together oh, yeah. this program, which we appreciate, but you're going to be available. Uh, we're, we've decided this year, uh, Monday night after the full day of um, uh, conference pre workshops, that folks uh, will need a opportunity just to relax a little bit. So at, in the Sheridan lobby area, we are putting together, STP is hosting a meetup on Monday night where cool. we're, we're encouraging our speakers to who are in town early to come on down and, and attendees, even if you're not part of the workshops, to come on down and uh, meet Mark and some of the other yeah. presenters there. Because, you know, Mark, one of the great things about conferences, the reason I love them so much, is it, it, it's really about the hallway conversations, the networking, the um, sidebar conversations that you have. Now, not to say that the presentations aren't important, but they're the start of the conversation. So yeah. I Doing a Monday meetup, it gives people an opportunity to shake some hands, get to know people, and make it more comfortable throughout the rest of the four days. I, th- I think so. There's, it's a it's a really down to earth conference. It's you know, other conferences sometimes have this really big. Uh, sometimes the people on the stage have this star like quality. You can't talk to them, touch them. There's this aesthetic distance, um, and I, you never. It's really something you don't encounter with the SDP con crew the minute you're sort of every time I'm leaving a session I've got two or three people I'm talking with and one-on-ones which brings up the other I just remembered the other session that Mike Lyles and I are doing um, which is on Thursday That's for right. people to meet up and um, learn about presenting at SCP con like how to do some basic public speaking but also if you're ever given a presentation to a room full of testers you know, other people, if you're just doing an impromptu presentation and they're just there for the cookies, you know, they're not gonna, it's usually an easy audience. But if you get a room full of software testers who come to SCPCon with their brains turned on and they're fully caffeinated, that can be the hardest classroom, the hardest audience you have ever tried to manage. So uh, it's really, we're going to do, Mike and I are going to spend some time doing role plays of how not to do a session. Uh, and if you've ever met Mike, he's hilarious. So it's, it's we're really it's going to be a fun show. But we're also going to encourage folks who are interested in in presenting at SDPCon to uh, sign up and look for mentors from other speakers, uh, so that we can encourage folks to you know practice, put together a good session, help them uh, you know present themselves. Uh, in the best possible way and get more comfortable with it. So mentoring um, is um, something I do with lots of different folks in the community naturally, but now we're going to try to kind of make that a little bit, build it in a little bit right into the conference. So that'll be fun. That's on Thursday, right? Thursday yep, that, Thursday yep. morning, I think. Yep, so, Thursday. Yeah, that'll be um, fantastic. Looking forward to that. And, I, and don't forget, you are also, um, just got to remind you of all the things you're doing there. You're also I know. Facilitating you're also facilitating STP radio during lunch on Tuesday where you're going to have a panel yeah. of folks and you're going to uh, talk about testing, allow the audience to interact with some of the folks that uh, will be sponsoring there and a good opportunity to talk about uh, all different types of testing subjects, including technology, uh, all kinds of different issues. So uh, I'm really excited that you're going to be the facilitator for that. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and that's something new this year. That is new, and and um, I, you and I were just talking about it before um, 
Rich, it's just a great idea. This you, You're inviting the sponsors who are generous enough to be part and support the conference and support the community. And so we're going to invite them on stage, and obviously they can uh, – they can. Uh, we want to have them talk about their products or services and what they believe is, you know, happening in the testing industry and what strategies they're thinking about and share, you know, what they do to support the community. But we're also going to sort of put it in this great format, um, which I think is brilliant, where you, you've heard the um, hot, you know, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, right? With, uh, <laughs> yep. uh, it's, a, it's a great show. But we're gonna, like, Who Wants to Be a Testing Millionaire? So uh, each of the participants, I think, will... Um, you know, well, they can ask. They would phone a friend. They could ask the audience a question. Uh, so we take an audience a question from. They could do a, a grab bag, maybe some predetermined questions out of the random grab bag, or they could suffer the swings and arrows of a challenging question from yours truly. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to think on the fly of something to actually ask them straight out, and we'll see how they can handle it. That would be very fun. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but you know, uh, but that should be a, that should be a great way to engage. And get those folks who normally we see, you know, in the in the vendor, um, uh, kind of the summit. What do you guys? What, yeah, the, where we the in the reception, expo, um, yeah, yeah, in the expo. Yeah. But yeah. this is yet another way to to kind of have those folks. You can see them and and hear them and and uh, and put a name to a face and know who to who to pick out in a crowd to go talk to. Um, so we'll see who we get uh, signed up on the stage for that. Speaking of which, also um, Rick and I were making some plans around um, STP podcasting, and we may have an announcement ready in, in April to sort of bring some either some new podcasts into STP generally, uh, maybe generate some new content. Uh, there are several folks, actually, Rich, who talked to me about wanting to start different kinds of testing podcasts and maybe doing more interview uh, style. The, this week in software testing, there's a lot of interviews uh, and panel discussions, so maybe we have some other... Uh, energy uh, in invigorating the uh, reinvigorating the uh, the podcast channel, um, which, as you know, we talked earlier, is near and dear to my heart. And you also, you have your own podcast. You have a radio show. Yes, I do. Uh, yes, yes, I do. But it would would not be. Um, it's it's one of those things that you don't talk about. You know, politics, religion, and uh, what, what's the other thing you're not supposed to talk about? Or is it just politics, your marriage, and religion, your, politics, <laughs> religion, and your marriage? <laughs> that's right. Uh, but yeah. no, it's a first person. But it's it's always really fun to encourage folks from the community. I mean, no matter what their uh, what their perspectives are, they're you know they, people that want to uh, podcast are this. Uh, they're nothing new, but they're just they're really uh, taking off in uh, in the latest couple of years. So uh, I'm psyched that uh, SDP is kind of embracing that a bit. Yeah, we we want to, we want to aggregate as much great information for the community as we can. So we're we're as you know, Mark, um, uh, we're always open to those ideas, and and we're really excited about getting as many folks as we can to participate in that. Basically, an STP uh, channel there, um, which which also brings me to. Uh, we, we're talking about um, expanding our advisory board a little bit, and you've been part right. of that. And I, I think that's a, an important concept in any community is to have people within the community driving the direction of the people who are trying to support the community. Because, you know, it is truly if they build it, they will come concept yeah. that, you know, it, it, it's what's important to you. So if you have a little bit of a say in that, I think people engage more. So we're looking forward to uh, moving forward a little bit on that. What are your thoughts about advisory boards? Well, I, you know, I think there's two things that ruin the experience of um, serving on an advisory board. And it, to, to, in one hand, when people show up with an agenda and they have the power mm -hmm. to start controlling and over-controlling and, and they start representing their own interests more than the community. And this is something that I've been on, even in corporations, you know, small startups uh, or, you know, just even civic organizations. There's always different, there's always personalities that kind of, sure. some people are looking for that. And they're in the testing world, there's other organizations where there, there is a little bit more provincial that way. Um, and that's just the culture of different things. One of the things I like about software test professionals is that it's, it's facilitated by um, non-testers to some extent. You guys are professional community management and uh, you know, um, uh, advisors mm -hmm. to growing a community of software testers. And 
that one thing that we need to do better as individuals from the community, as well as this new advisory board, is to just kind of help you understand more of our practice because you guys do great at doing conferences. You do great at the events. You do great at getting the content put together and accelerating what, what we do. But we need to make sure we're supporting you with the hottest, latest, greatest topics so that the quantitative results from, say, the surveys are matched together with, you know, sort of some actual representatives that volunteer their time to give you guys great feedback. So I think it, it works better to keep, um, you know, if there are going to be testers involved from the community, we should it just we should be seeing it as an opportunity to serve and represent um, the voice of of the community a little bit more directly for you guys and be there for you when you need us to say all right hey guys we're thinking about doing x y and z what do you think and we'll yeah. go over we'll you know will testers like it will is the subject interesting um, and I think together that'll be uh, that'll be good we're hopefully inviting a handful more people. Uh, to join us um, there in April. So if you, if anyone out there is interested, um, you can uh, you can ping Rich or myself, and we'll yep. we'll start talking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you hit you hit uh, uh, having been a um, part of professional communities for about you know ten eleven years now. That all the boards that I've been on, and I've been on dozens and dozens of boards. Uh, revolved around IT support and contact center and, and strategic advisory for testers yeah. is exactly what you talked about. You got there's this balance between agenda and engagement that really is important to the entire community. And there's nothing wrong with you know being associated and having it as part of your resume, but if the resume is your first and most focused area that you're looking at, usually that's where the agenda comes in. That you yeah. know, and and you're not thinking about the community. So, there, but but there are so many good people out there that just want to share what they do and support the things they do because that's what what it's about in a professional community is is yeah. really addressing the topics that are relevant. How do you stay relevant as a tester? Well, you listen to what the community is doing on a daily basis and you know, yep. look at what direction it's going in and have an impact on that direction, right? Yeah, get, you get behind it, I think, is, 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 uh, is kind of how it works. And i got to say, we have a hell of a lot of fun. And <laughs> it's, that's the th especially as a volunteer board, you know, the, you know there's, there's perks to contributing your time obviously you 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 know you get a sense that you're part of kind of the the leadership of the group and uh but again if it's if something like that the minute it's not fun then we're doing something wrong and i and i so i i would i'll pledge to always make sure that we are on a positive note and um and having fun contributing what we contribute i think that's um that's the kind of uh kind of community stp is anyway so so that should be good. So I'm I'm looking hey. forward to it, and I I always love going to SCPCon. It's going to be a blast. And speaking of fun, you know, and we're wrapping up here in a minute, uh, Mark. But okay. you know, I one of the most important questions I promised to get to today, talking about fun, is what is your favorite scotch, and and um, how did that? <laughs> How did that come to be one of the unofficial events at STPCon? Is uh, your informal uh, scotch tasting that seems to happen uh, somewhere along the line in, uh, at one of the nights in one of the hotel corridors or crevices somewhere? You'll see, you'll you'll hear or you'll smell that wonderful smell scent of scotch and you. cigars, <laughs> and uh, and then you'll see over in a corner a bunch of folks talking about testing. How did that come about, and yeah. what is your favorite scotch? Okay, so uh, it's uh, the the official distillery is called Ardbeg, A R D B E G, Ardbeg. It's my absolute favorite. Uh, it's one of the oldest distilleries. Um, well, they, there's a lot of really old ones, but it's one of the oldest ones um, in Scotland. And um, it, it just happens to be. Um, I was never really into it. I, a little bit of Scotch here, a little bit of Scotch there, uh, and your Macallans. Uh, you know, you have a little Glenlivet and such. And I remember going to buy a gift for another friend and said, well, I'll get him a bottle of scotch. And I walked into the uh, liquor store in Seattle and I, and I said, well, do you have anything really interesting or unique, something totally different? And um, he, he pointed up at the top of the, uh, 
uh, top of the shelf, above the shelf in this. He goes, you see that right there, that, that brown? Yeah. He says, that's sex in a bottle. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> it's a little risque. I'm like, okay. Um, and um, needless to say, I was hooked after that point just on the concept uh, and that he presented. So, uh, But it turns out then that in drinking scotch, this goes back to about 2000 and. Seven two thousand and eight. Uh, I made a connection when I was working at HP. I made a connection with Scott Moore and uh, Northway Solutions Group, who Scott's been a supporter of SDP and presented many times. Mm-hmm. And Scott's also at the time had gotten into a lot of Scott's chasing, and so Scott wanted to teach myself and and anyone else this very interesting technique for tasting Scotch. And it just so happened that we were going to be at SDPCon. I think it was in. New Orleans. Uh, it may, I might. It might have been in Miami. I think it was Miami. It in Miami. In Miami, yeah. and um, and of course, we always get in trouble if you're at the hotel and there's a corkage fee and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes we luck out and no one cares. Um, the place in Phoenix was awesome. We had a marvelous patio. Patio that was a really great facility. Mm-hmm. Um, so Scott was sort of the the lead at the time uh, in sort of teaching us this technique, and then. Brian Gerhardt was there from LiquidNet. Gene Ann was there. Uh, and there's a whole host. The crowd just kept growing. And, of course, <laughs> the minute the, the requirement was if, if I, I learned the technique from Scott, then in order for me to learn the technique even better, I had to teach the next person. So it became this telephone game of teaching this technique. And so now that's, it just became this thing. We would bring a, a unique and interesting bottle of scotch to the conference um, it's not a requirement to drink, of course. You can always just hang out with us and have whatever you'd like to, uh, soda water, whatever. But we, we end up, you know, shooting the breeze and digging deep and in, in doing, uh, doing talking about testing. And also we were talking about politics and all the things you're not supposed to talk about on a podcast. Um, but, uh, yeah, things get a little bit goofy. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good time. It's good camaraderie, and it adds to yet another dimension of um, the community, I think, getting together at the conference and, and, um, and, have it, and having a great time. Um, so it's always fun. And I will be bringing a, a unique and interesting bottle of Ardbeg uh, to the conference in New Orleans. So we'll, we'll, find, we'll figure out where we're going to go to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's what great stories uh, are developed from, right? Those kind of, uh, yes. like I was talking, the hallway conversations. And, and not that oh, yeah. Scott Moore has an issue. I know you said he, he enjoys, you know, he does a lot of tasting. But, you know, just just from that professional tasting perspective, we don't want anybody to get the wrong impression of Scott here. No, no. Or actually, you, I, I think you... Yeah, I think he actually went. To, we all went a little too far, as you would with any hobby like that. That's hard. It, it is, but it's. I mean, literally, he's he's almost. I would say the aficionado in how to do this tasting, and he's so well uh, known, uh, well read on it. Um, so I'm probably not going to see Scott uh, drinking too much scotch recently. But watch out for Mike Lyles. That guy, get him started on Long Island Ice Teas, and it's just. It, and he gets that blue stuff in it. It's really bizarre. He's. But yeah, Mike. Mike is really funny too. Um, but uh, again, we had we have last time we had probably twenty people sitting out on the on the patio and hors d'oeuvres, and it became an unofficial extension of the yeah, which is good uh, because the liability doesn't come back on on STP. I think that's good. So we'll, we'll keep it separate, <laughs> and um, it's a personal personal choice. You don't have to exactly, but it is yeah. fun, and it's a great way to get to meet people. And and I encourage anybody that's heading on down to uh, the conference to uh, find that uh, find that group and enjoy a little scotch tasting. And speaking of Mike Lyles, Mark, I will be uh, talking to him tomorrow via Blog Talk yeah. Radio at um, five o'clock Eastern. Uh, so five o'clock if, uh, Eastern. Yep. So uh, he will be. Uh, he's doing a keynote for for us uh, about what he what the '80s taught him about testing. I, I believe it's something to that effect. So it should be fun to talk to him tomorrow. I want to thank yeah. you for taking time today, and I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing you down in New Orleans. Yes, it'd be great. And uh, any place else you're going to be for folks that are listening and might be in an area? I know you do a lot of speaking. I know you have something coming up this week, don't you? This week I'll be in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina at the Triangle Information Systems Quality Assurance Association. Say that ten okay. times fast. Good. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm teaching um, oh several different things, continuous performance and DevOps. I'm also, uh, after that, headed out to uh, Brighton in the United Kingdom, Brighton, UK, uh, for oh, a wow. bash. 
uh, which is part of the Software Testing Club. Um, it's kind yes. of there's, they're springing up all over the place, and I think there's a meeting of the mind somewhere between the STP local chapters and maybe Software Testing Club. Maybe there, maybe we can work together. That would be fun. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I'll be I'll be in Seattle, Washington, uh, at the beginning of April. I'll be in Minneapolis uh, the weekend the week before STP, and then of course in New Orleans. Um, and I have some other one or two other things the rest of the year, but mostly if I survive March and April, <laughs> which then and I may if I make it alive to to SCP gone in New Orleans, I will consider myself lucky because I think I have like eight presentations a day now and then, um, and um, and I still have to get my slides done, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not worried about that. But uh, well, the way, but yeah, the way so I- yeah. Uh, the way I look at it, Mark, you'll be warmed up and ready to go. You'll be at top peak performance uh, uh, April 14th through the 17th for us. So just warming yeah, up. I'll be, stre- I'll be stress tested before then <laughs> very well. I will bring my, I'll bring my chloroseptic so that I'll, I'll, my oratory <laughs> skills will be, will be in, in fine form. But, yeah, that'll be, I'll be around, uh, all, around the West Coast uh, in Seattle, uh, New Orleans, the U.K. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It should be really fun. All righty. And thank you again, Mark, for joining us today. And thanks, everyone, for joining us on this STP radio podcast. Hopefully, we'll see you down in New Orleans. And if, if you are there, stop by and say hello that you uh, actually listen to this and uh, uh, introduce yourself to either myself or Mark. We'd love to hear from you. Mark, you have a Absolutely. great day. Thanks. You too. Thanks, Rich, very much. Thanks, Mark. And thanks, everyone. This ends today's STPCon Radio Podcast. We'll see you next time.